much, Dennis. Great to be with everybody today. And um, thank you for being here. I'd like to start with uh, expressing gratitude to my parents for introducing me to sports and supporting my participation and growth through sports. Participating in sports taught me many life and leadership lessons that um, the experiences, the challenges, and opportunities playing sports offered to me. I'm grateful to sports for the competition, for dealing with adversity and setbacks, experiencing the power of play, and for the experiences of being part of a team where we came together, united for a shared purpose. I learned early in life the importance of a team, as I am an identical twin. So I had a tag team partner from day one. Um, and as young children, we were introduced to sports. And sports became a social outlet. It became a source of uh, a learning, a life skills learning platform and a well-being endeavor for me. And it's actually become a multidimensional source of nourishment for my soul, my mind, and my body. I love the mental part of sports and the competition and the soulfulness of competing with and for one another. I love the camaraderie and building relationships. The field or the court became my happy place, playing with my teammates. And this notion of play has become uh, huge for me, and sports um, kind of uh, lit that fuse under me at a young age. And it's one of the things I think we don't do enough of as adults, whether it's sports or just playing in whatever brings us joy. And so that's part of the invitation today as well. I'm going to start with some stories about how I got introduced to uh, sports and some of the lessons from it. The first one is I remember when I was about, I would say, nine or ten and I was being disciplined uh, for something I had done wrong. I misbehaved in some way. Uh, go figure. Um, and my mother had set the discipline as well uh, that I wasn't going to play in the game. I forget if it was a travel team soccer or baseball or some some game I was going to play in. And she knew how important it was to me. But she did so several days before the game. And I thought about this afterwards. Um uh, because ultimately she said, you know, she wouldn't do that to the team. And she revoked that discipline and shifted to a different um, form of discipline for what I had done. And it hit me hard uh, that, like, I wouldn't do that to the team. Well, if you wouldn't do that to the team. What does that mean for me and how I show up, not just when I'm playing sports, but outside of life? And if I do something that would warrant being uh, not allowed to play and I wouldn't be there able to show up for my teammates, um, there was an element of being selfish there that uh, didn't sit well with me and that um, I needed to be better. Not that I was going to be doing not doing anything wrong the rest of my life, but it just was a notion of, hey, let me look at some introspection. Let me look at this and um, what can I learn from this and how can I be better? And so that came to be a theme for me as well. So the learning was discipline, focus, and priorities. She would say grades before games, right? So education before sports, which actually became education through sports, which was an interesting um, insight for me prioritization of the things that matter most, education, doing what you're supposed to do, honoring your commitments, allowed me to, to play in sports, which became a fertile ground for me learning many life and leadership lessons. I'll go to another example. In high school, my junior year, I'm playing for the soccer team and uh, we're having, we're not having some success. The, the other teams coming straight down the middle. I played in the center of the back uh, defense, and the, the other team was coming right down the middle, like came down right two consecutive times within like a couple of minutes, and like multiple people on on one. 
And I was like, what, what are you like? I got sort of getting angry and frustrated with, with my uh, teammates. And I walked off the field in disgust and frustration. Not one of my finer moments. And the learning moment that this offered was huge. It's like, you never give up on your team. You never walk out on your team. You never quit on your team. And it had it got me to realize that I didn't feel good about myself, that I wasn't able to do what I needed to do to stop them. And then so I started blaming other people. Uh, some of the humanness comes out in some of these stories. And that's why these stories are going to be ones where I wasn't at my best, because that's human, right? Um, and we learn a lot from those situations where we might not be our best. And so uh, quitting on my team and... Um, and embarrassing uh, the people that supported me and my family um, was a tough lesson to learn, but it was one that was sticky. The next one I'm going to share with you is from my adult years. So I'm probably 35 at this point. I'm in corporate America, and we're starting a softball league. Awesome, right? Get to play with people that you work with. Uh, have some fun and get to know each other outside of work. I was captaining the team. I knew six of the 20 people. So 14 people were new. I didn't know anything about their talents or their experience or anything much about them at all, other than we all work for the same company. And at that point in time, I was ultra competitive. I've been competitive through sports and had that kind of energy and mentality. Um, I thought in a healthy way, but we will we'll find out that in this case, not so much. Uh, I wanted to win. And yet as the captain, I needed to ensure everyone got a chance to play at least half the game. That was sort of the deal. Like everybody's investing their time and we're going to have games over the period of about a couple of months on Tuesday nights, double headers and Everybody deserves to play, regardless of talent level or whatever other uh, designation you want to talk about. I also needed to play a key role in the team to help with the success of the team in terms of playing shortstop and doing certain things. Um, so th that and um, where I was with the competitiveness and just making sure and worrying about everybody getting uh rotated in when most of the time all 20 showed up which was a great thing right everybody was engaged um and so that left me with um feeling very stressful on a game-to-game -game basis i loved playing but that role in that particular time and where i was in my development um was stressful fast forward to the end of the season we ended up 18 and 3 and winning the division championship which qualified us for a postseason triple elimination tournament. So great. We won. Uh, everybody got to contribute. Uh, people were enjoying it. I got to meet 14 people that I didn't know very well and get to know them better. Six people that I did know uh, pretty well uh, got to know them in this kind of context. And so we're going to the tournament now, right before the, the first game of a triple elimination tournament. So you lose three times or out, right? But if you lose the first time, then you're in the loser's bracket and it can be a long day. And so as ultra competitive winning guy focused on winning, um, I'm strat and I'm a strategic guy too. So I'm thinking, how do I structure the rotations to give us the optimization to win in the first game so we don't go in the loser's bracket. And yet, how do I be fair to everybody at the same time? And so um, I got overwhelmed with my um, wanting to win in that situation. And, um, and that overwhelmed ensuring people got to play, everybody got to play fairly. Uh, so the first game, we weren't doing so well. So I kind of kept the better players in and figured out we'd rotate people in later. And that led to a, a cycle of, well, if we don't keep doing well, that's not going to work out very well. And so I wasn't thinking clearly. I was thinking in a um, heightened state of letting my competitiveness override my rational thinking. Um, 
the result was some very unhappy teammates who gave up their weekend uh, only to not play so much. And it, the, the worst thing about it is I didn't communicate anything about it because we had been doing this all along. Everybody got to play half the game, rotate people through. No matter how, if we had 20 grade or if we had 10 grade, it's the same thing. We would rotate through them and um, we do we just do the best we can. Uh, but this experience did offer some valuable life and leadership lessons in terms of communication, the importance of communication. Um, it's okay to be competitive, but what's the purpose of why you're there in the first place, right? It's it's a work-related thing, first of all. It's a team activity, and we're all giving up our weekends for this uh, two-day tournament, you know, triple elimination. And so... Uh, I got um, I got a real dose of reality there in terms of, hey, um, you have to have uh, awareness for the bigger picture, Brian, and context around um, everybody's investment in this and not just your own, right? And so the me energy overrode the we energy, which is rare for me. Um, rarer now, but back then, um, the wanting to win. And I wanted to win for us, at least that's what I said to myself, but my actions <laughs> said differently, and that didn't sit well with me. Um, and so I apologized to the people that were affected. And um, and the lesson was, the failure is not in making mistakes, it's not learning from them. And so uh, that was the last time something like that happened in that kind of a setting where um, it wasn't about winning above all else. It was about the experience we created, people wanting to be on the team and getting to experience uh, playing and um, and the joy of participating in this work activity out of work, uh, outside of work. Um, people over prizes, right? So the trophies and the, I think about the times that we've won through sports and, and or in different uh, endeavors and the trophies in the moment may seem important, but they don't matter. The thing you remember is the relationship and the experience you've gone through with these people hmm. that are your teammates. And so it's, you know, and then I think about the leadership lessons and kind of what's important to me now in terms of character over talent. Um, I'd rather have uh, B or C students that uh, give effort, try, are learners, and, and want to uplift the team and contribute however they can, rather than A performers who are dragging the team down because they are like I was in that case, uh, the example of the uh, softball league tournament thinking of myself and kind of just focusing on um, my, me energy rather than we energy. Uh, learning is active, right? We're going to make mistakes and uh, and that shouldn't stop us from t trying and taking action. The action piece of it creates the opportunity for learning. And uh, that gets to these workplace activities and the leadership skills that are so valuable later in life. Uh, if you think about teamwork, cooperation, resilience, perseverance, goal setting and achievement, time management and discipline, leadership and communication skills, respect for rules and authority, adaptability and problem solving, all these things I was introduced to in sports because you're in a team environment presented with uh, conflict in different ways. It can be one-on-one -on -one, uh Someone's dribbling against you if you're playing defense and you've got to stop them or a team's got to stop them. Or someone's coming down and it beats your teammate and you have to help them out, right? So it's like we have to cover for each other. So all these different aspects of um, life and, and leadership, I got introduced to it at an early age. And, um, and this was all from a, an environment of play. And so this whole disconnect between work and play, it seems so like counter reality to what the best, what brings the best out in us, right? What if we played more? Mm -hmm. And so 
uh, as we uh, get into this conversation, um, I want you to start reflecting on your individual experiences in sports. And if you're not a sports person, let, don't get wrapped around sports. Get Think of something, a discipline or uh, an activity or something that you really loved and that taught you a lot. It could be music. It could be debate team. It could be dance. It could be whatever that is for you. For me, it just happened to be sports, particularly team sports, because I loved the we aspect of that and the shared purpose and the, and the learning and the growth that can come from that. And so reflecting on how sports have impacted my leadership, leading by example, right? Being a doer, not asking people to do what I wouldn't, wouldn't do. Um, handling adversity with positivity, like losing happens. How do you, how do you learn how to lose gracefully and take the learning opportunities from that to be better, right? Um, cultivating a team first mentality. If it's, if it's a team event, a team, uh, endeavor, you're important to the team success. Everybody's important to the team success. But Brian's no more important than anybody else, no matter what role I play, because everybody's role is going to be essential to us being successful. Balancing support and accountability, right? Everybody's going to be at a different place on their journey of their engagement with it, their experience with it, their training with it, their success level with it. And so be a lifter upper, right? Be there to, to encourage people. Maintaining integrity and respect for yourself, for your, the opponent, for the officials, which I admittedly had difficulty at times doing when I was uh, younger. <laughs> and, um, and so you learn from these behavior challenges in life. But without them, Without the uh, challenge, the growth becomes difficult. How are you gonna? What are you gonna grow from if you don't mess up, make mistakes, uh, behave badly? And I come back to what my mother chose to do with not the punishment of not allowing me initially and not allowing me to play in the game and letting me sit with it for a couple of days. Because, like, if we had a game on Saturday, I'd start thinking about it on Monday. And, it's, like, get excited about it all week. And she knew that. But thinking back on it, there was brilliance in the um, not telling me until, like, Friday that I was going to be able to plan the game. And letting me stew there so I could consume and reflect on what I had done and what I the, the the nature of that not being um, conducive to me, uh, deserving to play perhaps, and what that would do for the team, and so as I bring these uh, different uh, examples and situations regarding personal and professional development through leadership through sports, um, sports didn't just shape my leadership skills. They shaped my values, my character, and my commitment to being a positive and supportive influence on any team. And that's not because I've been wildly successful in every team and I've been like a, an A student or a, a star player. It's because I messed up a lot. It's because I learned and I uh, grew to appreciate that um, me becoming better required me to step into my vulnerability of what I uh what the reality was of how I showed up and how I needed to show up for the team, with the team, and bring my best self in those endeavors.